<coughs> okay, brothers and sisters in Christ, this is uh, part uh, it's David Pack, False Teaching, Part 3. Now, for those of you that listen to Part 2, to this video, he said that the church is going to be in the tribulation and that uh, God is supernaturally going to protect the Jew going to protect the church so for those of you that watched the video this is what he was referring to right here in this chapter Luke chapter 21 verse 36 which is clearly not talking about that at what at all because you know what the church was not even there yet <clears throat> but Jesus is indicating at this chapter the rapture but he did not describe it yet in great detail yet because they weren't quite all ready for that yet but later when Paul was converted he revealed it to them but let me read the chap let me read this then I will explain it to you this is what he said so right here Luke chapter 21 verse 36 watch therefore and pray always that you may be counted worthy to escape all these things that will come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. Now he's saying that this verse here is talking about to escape, to protection, to shelter, that God's going to protect us. But yet, he didn't read the verse before that. Look at verse 34. But take heed to yourself, lest your hearts be weighed down with caring darkness and cares of this life, and that day come on you unexpectedly how could that be if you're going to know when it's going to come you will know exactly when you see the, the signing of the Antichrist it doesn't match for it will come as a share on all those who dwell on the face of the whole earth watch therefore and pray always that you may be counted worthy to escape all these things that will come to pass and stand before the Son of Man and he's trying to say that what I'm about to read here is talking about the tribulation. To flee. Let me read this part. Luke chapter 21 verse 20. Let me show you that he's lying here too as well. But when you see Jerusalem surrounded by armies, then know that its desolation is near. And let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains. Let those who are in the midst of her depart. And let not those who are in the country enter her. For those are the days of vengeance that all things which are written may be fulfilled she, he's trying to say that this is talking about the abomination he's not he's crazy he's trying to say that's why we gotta flee we gotta go to protection when we see this he's not talking about this see he didn't read the whole context let me read the whole thing to you from verse 20 I'll start again but when you see Jerusalem surrounded by armies, then know that its desolation is near. And let those who are in Judea flee to the mountain. And let those who are in the midst of her depart. And let not those who are in the country enter her. For these are the days of vengeance, that all things which are written may be fulfilled. But woe to those who are nursing and to those who are nursing babies in those days <clears throat> for there will be great distress in the land and wrath on this people and they will fall by the edge of the sword and be led away captive into all nations all nations they will let they will be led away captive into all nations and Jerusalem will be trampled by Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled well, that's not talking about the tribulation this literally happened in 70 AD when Titus, the Roman general, attacked Jerusalem. Many shall fall by the other edge of the sword because many of the Jews got killed. And they destroyed the temple. And the, Jew, the, the, the Jews, that some of the Jews that survived, they were led away captive into all nations, exactly as history records. This is pre-recorded history. It's now history. The Jews were scattered to the four corners of the earth. This is all that this meant. And yet, this is what really got my blood boiling when I heard this part. 
he's trying to say that uh, there's Old Testament churches, which is a lie from the pit of hell. There was no church. There was no church, man. This guy's lying in your guys' faces. So where am I bringing you guys right now? Let me think. So he said the church. Yeah. Okay, yeah. That's where I'm taking you right there. So let me say this. When Jesus was hanging on the cross, Father, I keep my... I keep my... Father... I commit my hands into your Father, I commit my spirit into your hands. It is finished. He breathed his last and he died. There was a great earthquake and the temple split in two from top to bottom. So, the Jews, they did not want the bodies remaining on the cross because the Passover was coming. The Sabbath, I mean, the Sabbath was coming. The, yeah, the Sabbath was coming. So they ordered that the, the legs would be broken because the way the fixation was, they were holding themselves up. So if they broke the legs, they just they would just fall. They would be hanging down. So they're, they're suffocating because they're not getting air into their lungs. So they would kill them. So they did it to both of the both of the, the people that were on the cross. But when they came to Jesus, they saw that he was already dead. So they said, "Make sure." So they they pierced his side, and what happened? Blood and water came out of his side. See that? Now what is the significance of that? It's very significant. Jesus on the cross. That blood and water. He was birthing the church. That's when the church was coming. He birthed the church by blood and water coming out of his side. If you realize afterwards, after his resurrection, <clears throat> you know... He appeared to his disciples, and what did he do? He breathed on them. And he said, Receive the Holy Spirit. As the Father has sent me, even so I send you. And then they asked him the question here, in the, in the book of Acts. You see, the they didn't know nothing about the rapture yet. That came way after, through the Apostle Paul. So they asked Jesus right here, and being assigned together with them, he commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, You have heard from me, for John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. Therefore, when they had come together, they asked him, saying, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? And he said to them, It is not for you to know times or seasons which the Father has put in his own authority. But you will but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. So and then chapter two, the church is the birth of the church. The church begins right there. But he was birthing a church on the cross with the blood and water. But this is why he said, wait in Jerusalem. For the baptism of the Holy Ghost. So, this is the thing that really got me mad right here. Revelation chapter 12. You guys can see it, it's coming. Part 1. You guys can see my video. Let me see what the name of that video will be. David Cpac's False Teaching Part 1. Get Part 2. Now this is Part 3. Now I'm showing you straight from Scripture that he's a liar. So, the church only, the rapture, you know, he doesn't believe in it. He thinks we're all messed up and we're deceived and he said there's no rapture. You guys are going to see it. The tribulation is going to come and you guys are expecting the rapture and you're going to find yourself in the tribulation, blah, 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 blah. But you know what? Jesus talked about it in John 14. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you so. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. 
so that where I am, there you also may be. If you recognize it, he says, I will come again and receive unto myself. He didn't say that he's going to come and be where we are. He said he's going to come and take us so that we will be where he is. And this guy, David Cepak, is mocking that. What? Jesus is going to come back and do a U-turn and go back into heaven? Well, yeah. That's what he's going to do. That's what he said, and he will do what he said he will do. Yeah, this guy's mocking, saying he's going to suck you up like a vacuum. He's literally mocking the Word of God. He's trying his best to make the truth into a lie, but he can't. But anyways, Jesus referred it to there. It was the fateful night before his crucifixion. He told the disciples that he was going away. They said he'd come again. But he didn't reveal it all to them. He didn't reveal the specifics to them because they weren't quite ready for all that yet. But later when Paul was converted, he revealed it to them. To the Apostle Paul. Matthew, Mark, all of those, pa all of those passages are talking about the set and come. It's not talking about the rapture. That's why in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, 51 to 52 it says, Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump. For the trump will sound and the dead will be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed. And yet, he's trying to say the last trump is the last trump from Matthew chapter 24 verse 31 where the angels, he'll send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet and they'll gather his elect. And he says that the, bear, the dead that are buried will rise and we who are alive will go up and we'll come right back down on the Mount of Olives. There's a problem there. There'd be no reason for the separation when he separates the sheep from the goats because they would have been taken up with them. So when he says, Depart from me to the wicked, you curse and everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. Therefore, there's only the righteous standing there. But they wouldn't even be standing there. They'd be with them if the rapture really took place. So the wicked would be in hell. And... Uh, you have a resurrected body, <clears throat> therefore there's no one left to rule over because there's nobody left, and you can't have a millennium because there's no one left to populate the millennium because people are going people are going to be giving birth. It says that people are going to come up year after year to worship the king, and whoever does not come, you know, whoever does not come and worship the king, Jesus is going to cause it not to rain on their land. That can't be talking about us. We would never do that. We always want to worship Jesus. It says clearly that children are going to grow up and so on and so on. We wouldn't be, we, we wouldn't be able to have a millennium. So basically, it's a false teaching that he's teaching. Okay? Scripture clearly denies a post-trib rapture. That it's a lie from the pit of hell. And plus, there would be no reason to have Satan bound in the bottomless pit for a thousand years. What's the very purpose for that? So he can't deceive the nations. But yet, you know, people don't understand scripture. Because he's a false teacher. He doesn't want to. Because he wants to justify what he believes. Like it says in the Bible, like it says in the scripture, that people will turn to uh, fables, turning to teachers that will tell them what their itching ears want to tell them. And that's exactly what he's doing. That's exactly what he is doing. So, this is what I want to show you right here. This is what really made me mad. Revelation chapter 12. Guess who he's saying Revelation chapter 12 is? The church. This has nothing to do with the church. Let me read that part to you where he said this is the church here. Then being with child, she cried out in labor and in pain to give birth. She, she, he said the woman child gave birth to the church. This has nothing to do with the church. Yeah, she bore a male child. He's saying this is talking about the church. Who was to, you know? Saying the woman who was ready to give birth to devour her child as soon as it was born. She bore a male child who was to what? Rule all nations. 
with a rod of iron, and her child was caught up to God and his throne. Then the woman fled into the wilderness, where, she's saying this is the church right here, which is not. Then the woman fled into the wilderness, where she had the place prepared by God, that they should feed her there 1,260 days. This is talking about the Jews. Just trying to make that the church. That's total blasphemy, man. That's not talking about the church. That's clearly indicating Israel. The woman that bore a child who's to rule all nations is Jesus. Who's the male child? The seed. It's the Jew. It's Israel. The Virgin Mary came from the seed of David. But let me show you now that you will not be detected in the tribulation period. That is a lie from the pit of hell. Saying that, you see, that's why you have to line everything up with scripture. I'm going to show you right here. It's one of the seven seals, by the way. Revelation chapter 6, verse 9. When he opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of those who had been slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held. And they cried with a loud voice, saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, until you judge and avenge our blood on those who dwell on the earth? Then a white robe was given to each of them. And it was said to them that they should rest a little while longer until both the number of their fellow servants and their brethren who would be killed as they were was complete doesn't sound like you were protected there does it he's a liar he's lying in your face and go to revelation chapter 13 verse 7 what's it say and it was granted to him to make war with the saints and to overcome them overcome them doesn't sound like you were protected there either does it see the bible clearly teaches otherwise this guy's lying to you the church will not even be here. He's trying to make the church into Israel. Yeah, now I'm going to show you in Daniel as well. Oh yeah, and he was trying to make Daniel chapter 12 the church as well. Just listen to the video. You can hear it from his own mouth. But look what Daniel says. Daniel says the total opposite of what this guy is trying to say. He shall speak promised words against the Most High shall persecute the saints of the Most High. Ah, he's going to persecute the saints. This is the tribulation saints, by the way. And let me show you something in uh, Zechariah. Many Jews are going to be killed as well, but God has his remnant. Some of them will be saved. Well, all Israel shall be saved, but many of them are going to be slaughtered and killed. It says that in... Uh, where is it? In Zechariah chapter 13 somewhere. Let me see if I can find it here. Hmm. Wait, was it? I will bring the one third through the fire. Well, refrain them as silver is refined and test them as gold is tested they will call on my name and i will answer them i will say this is my people and each one will say the lord is my god where is it it shall come to pass that if anyone still prophesies and his father and mother who brought begot him will say to him you shall not live because you have spoken lies in the name of the Lord and his father and not that one awake O sword against my shepherd against the man who is my companion says the Lord of hosts strike the shepherd and the sheep will be scattered then I will turn my hand against the little ones. 
and it shall come to pass in all the land, says the Lord. Yeah, that two thirds in it shall be cut off and die. But one third shall be left in it. One third shall be left in Israel. They're going to be protected supernaturally by God. That's not talking about the church. These guys are not. But anyways, I want to take you to Revelation right now. Scripture clearly teaches that we're going to be out of here way before the arrival of the Antichrist. Look at this. Revelation chapter 4. The 24 elders is the church. Because it's verse 22. Revelation chapter 3, verse 22 says, He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. And the church is no longer mentioned after it, because she's in heaven. Immediately after these things, I saw a door. I looked and behold, a door standing open in heaven. The rapture took place. We're out of here. Look at verse 4. Around the throne were 24 thrones, and on the thrones I saw 24 elders sitting clothed in white robes, and they had crowns of gold on their heads. Crowns of gold. The judgment seat of Christ. Remember Paul said that I have the crown of life, which the righteous judge will give to me, but not only to me, but also to those who love his appearing. And even James, he that he who overcomes, well, you'll get the crown of life. That we're going to get that crown. But you don't see any crowns mentioned at the judgment seat. Uh, I mean, you don't see any crowns mentioned at the, the judgment of the nations. It's at the judgment seat of Christ. It's right here in Revelation chapter 4. And look, it goes on. Before the, yeah. The first creatures, like, what's the name of the lions? Holy, holy Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come, wherever the living creature gave glory and honor and thanks to him who sits on the throne, who lives forever and ever. The 24 elders fell down before him who sits on the throne and worship him who lives forever and ever and cast their crowns before the throne saying you are worthy O Lord to receive glory and honor and power for you created all things and by your will they existed and were created and I saw in the right hand of him who sat on the throne a scroll written inside and on the back sealed with seven seals and I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice who is worthy to open the scroll and to loosen its seals and no one in heaven or on the earth or under the earth was able to open the scroll or to look at it so I wept much because no one was found worthy to open the open the read the squirrel or to look at it but one of the elders ah one of the elders that's the church one of the church members one of the elders said to me do not weep behold the lion the tribe of judah the root of david has preserved to open the squirrel and to loosen its seven seals now that's one of the elders of the church talking. We're there. You see, how do you know it's, how do you know it's the church? Well, I'm going to show you in a minute. And I looked, and behold, in the midst of the throne, and of the four living creatures, and in the midst of the elders stood a lamb, as though it had been slain, having seven heads, and seven horns, and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God, sent out into all the earth. Then he came and took the squirrel out of the right hand of him who sits on the throne. Now when he had taken the squirrel, the four living creatures and the twenty-four elders fell down before the lamb, each having a, a harp and golden bowls full of incense, which are the prayers of the saints. And now we're worshiping him. We're worshiping him. We're singing a song. What song are we singing? Well, let's read and find out. And they sang a new song, saying, 
you are worthy to take the squirrel and to open its seals for you were slain and have redeemed us to God by your blood out of every tribe and tongue and people and nation that's the, the body of the church we have members of believers out of every tribe different tribes of the earth and different tongues different languages and people and nation and have made us kings and priests to our God and we shall reign on the earth and that's the truth we shall reign on the earth this, so this shows that we're in heaven way before the Antichrist is unleashed we were seeking we were there talking to him we're crowned it's so clear in scripture and yet people can't accept that well I accept my Bible I accept the Word of God I don't believe what man tells me so it goes on we shall reign on the earth then I looked and I heard the voice of many angels around the throne and living creatures and the elders and the number of them was 10,000 times 10,000 and thousands of thousands saying with a loud voice worthy is the lamb who was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing and every creature which is in heaven and on the earth and under the earth and such as are in the sea and all that are in them I heard saying blessing and honor and glory and power to be him to be to him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb forever and ever then the four living creatures said amen and the 24 elders fell down and worshiped him who lives forever and ever you see that and now what happens the next verse now I saw when the Lamb opened one of the seals so now he's unleashing the seal what's the first seal and I heard one of the four living creatures saying with a voice like thunder come and see and I looked and behold a white horse he who sat on it had a bull and a crown was given to him and he went out conquering and to conquer the Antichrist we're in heaven the Antichrist is a judgment upon the world this just shows that these guys are liars the mid-tribbers the post-tribbers are liars Oh, the wrath of God is going to fall out at the last half. Well, it shows right here it's falling out now. Why in the world is Jesus pouring out the, 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 the seven seals? He says the Lamb's doing it. Come on, man. Look. Now I saw when one of the Lamb opened one of the seals. This is the judgment. This is the first judgment that's poured out on the earth. The Antichrist is the, is the, is the judgment. The Antichrist is, the, is a judgment upon the earth. Come on. And go to verse 15. What does verse 15 say? And the kings of the earth, the great man, the rich man, the commanders, the mighty man, every slave, every free man, hid themselves in the caves and in the rocks of the mountains and said to the mountains and rocks, Fall on us and hide us from the face of him who sits on the throne. And from the wrath of the Lamb. Not the wrath of the Lamb. For the great day of His wrath has come. And who is able to stand? So it's the great day of His wrath, right? And yet 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 9 says, For God did not appoint us to wrath, but to attain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. So it's the great day of His wrath, and we're not appointed unto God's wrath, which means... The tribulation is not meant for the church, and the Bible clearly teaches that. This guy, David C. Pack, lied to you guys. The Bible is clear as can be. God is going to be dealing with Israel. He's going to be done with the church. That's why he's going to rapture his church out of here. Just remember, whoever's listening to this right now, okay? Remember when the rapture happens, that you've been warned. Mock it, scoff it, do whatever you want. God's word will be proven to be true. Because over over eighty percent of Bible prophecy has already come to pass, and not one prophecy has ever failed, and it never will fail. It has come to pass with complete and total accuracy. So the rapture will happen with one hundred percent accuracy. You will see it on the live television, newspaper, you name it. That the rapture will take place in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, 
and the people that get left behind will have to go through the tribulation. They will have to go through the judgments of God. Nowhere in this Bible does it say that God will protect the church. I just showed you that they were killed. They were under the altar. And plus in Revelation chapter 20, let me read that before I let you guys go. Revelation chapter 20 verse 4. What does it say? Well, let's read it and find out. And I saw thrones and they that sat on them and judgment was committed to them. Then I, then I saw the souls of those who had been protected. No. I saw the souls of those who had been beheaded for their witness to Jesus and for the word of God who had not worshipped the beast or his image and had not received his mark on their foreheads or on their hands and they lived and reigned with Christ for a thousand years. The Bible is the word of God. The Bible totally tells you. This Bible is screaming at you right now telling you that this guy David C. Pack is a liar. He's lying to you. Believe the word of God. God's word is forever true. You guys are being duped. You guys are being lied to. You are fallen false teachers and false prophets. And I just showed you straight from scripture that he's a liar and he's a, a charlatan. I dismissed the case. God's word always defends itself. No one needs to defend this. It will defend itself. Just like a lion. Nobody needs to defend the lion. You just open the cage up and the lion will defend itself. The same thing with this. Every word in this book will be proven to be true. All the events of the Bible will be fulfilled. And you will bear witness to that when it happens. And remember, you'll come back at this time and remember that I told you straight from Scripture that it was happening. The rapture is the next event to take place. This is all i got to say and God bless you all.